to How to Art. This is Sherry Elliott Pope, and I have before you here a picture of a painting done by Mary Daniel Morgan, who lived from 1868 to 1948. She was a California Impressionist, and her painting here is entitled Carmel Valley in the Spring. I would like to dedicate this painting to my stepson, Jay Pope, who picked this painting for me to paint. And on a side note, Mary Daniel Morgan survived the 1906 San Francisco earthquake. For her color palette, she has used yellow, orange, red, orange, blue, green, blue, white, and black. I have pre-primed the canvas with two coats of gesso and then done an underpainting of blue-green. I'm painting the sky area now, which is a light blue, and we don't have very much sky showing. Uh, we have mountains uh, taking up much of our view of the sky. And we have some fluffy cumulus clouds in the sky that we can see and the mountains come down uh, into a valley and we can see some clouds um, between the mountain so we'll be coming down uh, in the center of those mountains uh, with some clouds and I'm just taking a quick uh, run through of the clouds painting the clouds I'm using a, I think it's an 8 or a 10 filbert for this, and we can come back later and define those clouds a little better. I'm determining where the mountains are now. and. She has used a technique to show depth uh, called atmospheric perspective. And so she has the far mountain, a very light a shade of blue-green, and the closer mountain, a darker color. And the mountain that's behind the second mountain here that I'm drawing now. We have some dark colors, but um, it, they're muted uh, colors, and there's some lighter highlights on them. So we can say that the first mountain we drew is the furthest back. Um, the second one is the closest, and the third one that we drew right here I'm working on putting the highlights on uh, is in the middle of those two mountains. And what she's done is um, quickly laid down paint and she's got her um, brush strokes uh, going in a diagonal uh, direction. And so I am looking at the color she used and trying to add some of those in there and you can see that her mountain has an uneven top to it uh, which lends uh, to making it look more realistic and I'm taking a mid value and going in between the strokes to kind of blend those areas. I'm adding the highlights to the closest mountain to us now and again she has her brush strokes going in a diagonal area in the same direction.
I've mixed my blue greens together by adding thalo blue and thalo green and I've added a complement color of red in there to gray this color down so the colors appear more muted. And you can see that the colors that I'm adding um, as highlights on the mountains are colors that I mixed, uh, trying to match somewhat uh, the colors that she used with the uh, maroon browns and the gray grays. I'm now adding the accent colors to the mountain in the far distance. And uh, there's just a very subtle shade difference, shades of difference. Uh, so it's not readily apparent. I've mixed together a maroon uh, brown for the mountain here, and this is actually the mountain that is the closest to the viewer. And so it has the warmer and darker colors. I'm adding the highlights now as I see them with some pine green. I've taken some hooker green or that yellow green and added a touch of the thalo blue to, to it uh, to create this color. She has some projections on coming off of the mountain. I'm not really sure what they are. It's probably maybe some trees or, or bushes. And so I'm indicating those shapes now and colors. There appears to be um, the indication of a path leading back into the background at the base of this mountain. And so I'm trying to uh, indicate that here and um, draw some of the grasses as well that are in front of the mountains.
of uh, violet to the mountains and some additional highlights. Um, sometimes as your paint dries you'll lose some of the color and need to come back and touch it up. grassy area now at the base of the mountain. There is a white highlight at the top of this mountain and I'm going to add that in. There are some large trees in front of the mountains and I am using a light green uh, to figure out where they are, to just kind of block them in. They actually look like sil silhouettes um, with a very dark color um, in the black family. Uh, so um, I will use that color, but I felt a little safer starting out with the green. So now I'm adding in the black uh, to create our silhouette. Using a filbert brush to make the leaves on this tree and I am using a line brush to make the branches. I have mixed together hooker green and ivory black to give me a very dark black green and I'm trying to create the same shape tree that she did. And so the trunk is thick and slightly crooked. And as I come over to the other tree, uh, it is basically doing the same thing over on this tree. on the bushes that are in front of the tree now. I'm using that same color of the black green and this is also in silhouette. to the tree.
have some phthalo blue uh, and white mixture that I'm adding now as highlights to those bushes. Um, this will help um, give them shape, be able to tell the shape better. I'm now going to draw the house or barn that we see in the distance. All we can really see is the roof and a portion of the building. And so I'm using white and gray. So we can see the curved row of flowers and I am just using some of that same gray color to just kind of figure out where those rows are uh, in relation to the house. So I've mixed together a hooker green and yellow and have a dark shade of that and also a lighter shade of that by adding more yellow. And I'm using a fan brush and a filbert brush to add those colors into the grassy areas. So first I'm going to try to determine where those grassy areas are and then I'll come back and add the flower areas.
flowers now. And so we'll be using orange, yellow orange, and red orange. And we'll also have a few white highlights. The mistake I made though is I used the wrong shade of red. And so it came out looking a little pink, which is not what I wanted. I wanted a definite uh, red orange. So I had to paint over the red orange area. There are blue reds and there are orange reds. And I made. So when I mix the original red orange, I use cadmium red, which at least with the basics uh, by Liquitex is more of a blue red. So I had to come back in also again using the basics by Liquitex brand and I used a crimson red which is more of a red orange. And I'm using a filbert brush. I have a filbert brush that the bristles are really worn and frayed. And so it makes a great brush for doing this uh, stapling effect. I'm adding a light yellow orange into the flower area now. I am using crimson red right out of the tube now in the flower area. So I used a line brush for the reds that I added and now I've picked up my filbert again and I am going back in um, to not have the reds overpower the area and um, using the orange. I am using a line brush to create single flowers in the grass area. 
I'm adding some red into some of those single flowers now. I'm using the end of a fan brush to add white highlights to the grass area and to the flowers. I've lightened up the house by adding uh, another layer of white on there and gray. And then I've darkened up the area behind the house, which is going to help create this house as a focal point uh, by the contrast of the dark dark against the white. And I'm drawing now the tree that she has in the foreground. It could be some type of cactus or some kind of tree I'm not familiar with. So I'm using what she did, but then adding um, my own touches to it to um, see if I can get something that makes sense to me. So we're finished. I'm happy with the results and I hope you are too. Thank you for watching.